Uh, you'll probably think that uh, the theme here is going along AOPI and we're covering different instruments during these webinars. And today, I, like Sarah mentioned, I want to focus specifically on viability analysis for primary cells uh, using AOPI and tripan blue stains. So without further ado, let's get started. Okay. Sorry, a bit of a technical issue here. Okay, training topics. So first we're going to go over the Tripan Blue viability assay. We're going to look at some cell images of Tripan Blue um, stained on cell lines. And, uh, and then we'll do a quick example of the Tripan Blue assay on our Auto T4 software. And then next you can see number two, what is the fluorescent nuclear staining viability method and why do we need it? How to perform this method, the AOPI viability assay, and then which viability assay is right for me? Tripan Blue or AOPI. So the Tripan Blue protocol, it's very simple. Uh, you can see here that the viability analysis is for cell lines or primary cultured cells. Uh, first, we're going to dilute a small volume of Tripan Blue. So I, I usually recommend 1 ml. You don't have to dilute your entire stock. Uh, but we'll take 1 ml of Tripan Blue and dilute that one to one with phosphate buffered saline. So our final concentration before we mix with our cells is going to be 0.2%. Typically, the stock solution you purchase uh, from any reagent vendor is a 0.4%. Is a and then also, if your tripan blue, is, is generally if it's older, it, sometimes you have to filter the, the tripan blue to get out any uh, crystallized fragments that could be in there. Next, we mix one to one, so we take 20 microliters of our tripan blue, our diluted tripan blue, and mix that with 20 microliters of our cell sample. And then we can load 20 microliters onto our counting chamber. So you can see a little animation here, 20 microliters cell sample, 20 microliters tripan blue, and we can load our counting chamber to get ready to count. So here are some images. Um, this is an SF9 insect cell line stained with tripan blue. This is on our Auto T4 software. So you can see it has a nice blue color in the background. Um, and you can make out some dead cells on here uh, as you scan the image. This is our A549. This is a human alveolar basal epithelial cell. This is on our vision. You can see it's not blue. Um, that's just a difference in the optical hardware. But again, you can look at this image. You can visually see our live cells with a distinct round membrane and bright center, and our dead cells stained uh, dark with a tripan blue. Okay, there, here's our HT29D4. This is a human clonal cell line derived from colon adenocarcinoma cells. This is on our Auto 1000 software. Okay, and again, you can see the similar morphology, a nice round uh, outline on the live cells with a bright center. And then you can see some of these weaker um, and then some of the darker stained tripan blue dead cells. So with that said, I'm just going to switch to my Auto T4 software, and we'll take a look at some cell images. So these are, are actually our HT29 D4 cells here, okay, and it's stained with tripan blue. So if we maximize our image here, you can see some of them are clumpy. I can make out one, two, definite, three, four, some dead cells around the image. Okay, so really quickly, um, we select our HT29 cell type, we want to make sure that test viability is checked. Our dilution factor is 2, since we diluted 1 to 1 with, cell, uh, with our cell sample in tripan blue. So I'm going to quickly recount this image. You see the software is counting. All right, and now that it's finished, uh, let's zoom in to get a better look at what's counted. Okay, and we can check this counted box, and you can see that uh, the clusters of cells are, are declustered, so you get an accurate measurement of your live cells that are somewhat clumpy. And you can see that the dead cells are outlined in red, indicating that they are, in fact, dead cells. Okay, so very simple, very easy. Just going to go back to our presentation here. Okay, so moving on, what is the fluorescent nuclear staining viability method, and why do we need it? So here's a video um, 
hopefully this works this time, uh, but I, do, I will show you on the website where you can find it. Um, so let me just play this here. All right, it doesn't want to cooperate. Let me just show you um, on our website where you can find this video. So here's our home page. Uh, on the home page, we have this videos link right here. If you click on this, we have all these different videos on how to do uh, various assays, um, going over some of the assays, some uh, how to import cell types, a lot of different things. Um, here's a video measuring live cell concentration. That's me. Uh, if you want to watch that, that's on our Auto 2000. Um, and then here is our primary cell concentration and, uh, and I'm sorry, our dual fluorescent AOPI assay. So here's, here's the mechanism by which AOPI works. Why acridine orange fluoresces green in the live cells, why propidium iodide fluoresces red in the dead cells, uh, how it binds to the DNA, how it permeates the cells in the sample. Uh, I would recommend watching this just to get a good background idea on how this uh, principle works. So let me go back. So, so what do we see here? This is actually a leukophoresis sample. And what this image will demonstrate is overcounting uh, by simply using bright field morphology in our tricam blue method. So as you all, I'm sure, know, bright field uses, um, uses the morphology of the cells to determine what is live and what is dead. So uh, you can see some debris in the background. You can see some cells that are, um, that are circular with a bright membrane that appear to be uh, live cells. And, uh, and you can see some dark cells here too. So this is a zoomed in image from our Auto 2000. We counted this by eye. We counted a total of 119 cells. This is an overlay of our fluorescent image. Okay? And what this indicates is nucleated cells. So you can see that our green fluorescence indicates our live cells. And the red fluorescence, there's two here, indicates dead cells. If you count the total fluorescent particles, there's actually 39. And then if we take a look at our bright field image overlaid with our fluorescent image, you can see here that, um, that uh, the overlaid image, there, there's about 80 cells that are overcounted that are truly not nucleated. And this is about three times as much. So you can see here that, um, that this actually, in fact, is important for these primary sample, in this case, a leukophoresis sample. Um, we have a request to play the AOPI video from our web, uh, from our website. So let me just go back to our website. Dual fluorescent AOPI assay for cell concentration and viability. This assay is most suitable for primary cell samples, such as white blood cells, splenocytes, and lymphocytes, which contain debris and unwanted non-nucleated cell types, such as red blood cells. Acridine orange and propidium iodide are nucleic acid binding dyes. They produce strong fluorescence after binding to DNA. AO is permeable to both live and dead cells. PI is only permeable to dead cells. Cells are mixed with both acridine orange and propidium iodide. Channel 1 of the thermometer is configured with an optical module with blue excitation and green emission. For a live cell, AO enters the cell membrane and binds to its DNA. Under blue excitation, strong green fluorescence is emitted and detected. PI is excluded from a live cell. Both AO and PI enter a dead cell through the damaged cell membrane and bind to its DNA. Under blue excitation, the green fluorescence by AO is absorbed by PI, producing an extremely weak green signal. Channel 2 of the thermometer has green excitation to detect red emission. Live cells exclude PI. Without its DNA binding, 
there is no detectable red light from live cells. For a dead cell, PI enters the damaged cell membrane and binds to its DNA, producing a very strong red fluorescence. To perform a cellometer AO PI assay, load stained cells into a counting chamber, insert the chamber into cellometer. Cellometer automatically performs cell image acquisition and imaging analysis. Typical assay time is less than 60 seconds. Cellometer can also perform many other dual fluorescent viability assays. Explore our website at nexalom.com for more information. All right. So thank you, Lindsay, for the, for the request. Um, so we have a question and answer uh, section at the end. So uh, if you have any questions about that assay, we'll definitely address those. So um, let's keep going on and, uh, and going along the same line as the previous slide about overcounting. Uh, this, this chart here shows samples A through F. And, uh, and what was performed was this, their leukapheresis samples are human PBMCs and they're counted by manually using a hemocytometer in Tripan Blue and then automated on the cellometer using ALPI stains. Uh, and again, this is using a leukapheresis sample. And what this shows is overcounting, the overcounting ratio is sample dependent, whether it's um, a technician error in terms of isolating the cells or, um, or the actual patient samples. Um, different samples contain different degrees of RBC contamination. So this should be considered when performing manual counts because uh, the more RBC contamination, the more likely that the uh, live cells or total cell concentration and viability will be overestimated. So you can see that the ratios of A through F uh, vary greatly from three times overcounting to even 12 times overcounting. This data that I just showed is actually in this publication. Uh, we collaborated, you can see here, with the, the Department of Neurology at Harvard Medical School, Brigham and Women's Hospital in Boston. And, uh, and this paper published in the Journal of Immunological Methods is a great reference um, to go over how PBMC counting is best done using the AOPI fluorescent assay. Okay, and I put the digital object identifier there for all for anyone who wants to look this up um, after after uh, the public after I'm sorry after the webinar. All right, so let's take a look at some primary uh, samples that use AOPI to stain. So here's human PDMC. Um, so again, you can see some nice. Dark, uh, dark membrane, bright center cells. If we overlay our fluorescent image, you can see that most of those cells are in fact nucleated and fluoresce brightly. None of these, um, none of these cells in the background, which could be platelets or, or even red blood cells, uh, have no fluorescence. Here's a mouse tail blood sample, and you can see in the bright field, it's very, very uh, jam-packed with cells. But if you look at the fluorescent staining over here, you can actually see six nucleated live cells. Here's an example of fresh human bone marrow. Again, looks similar to our mouse tail vein blood sample. Uh, lots of cells here. Okay, and when we overlay our fluorescent image, you can see that there are not nearly as many cells fluoresce for DNA, meaning those are our nucleated cells. Uh, the cells circled in green are alive. The cells circled in red are dead. Here's a human stromal vascular fraction sample, uh, less concentrated but lots of debris. If we overlay our bright uh, fluorescent image, you can see here not every cell takes up the AOPI dye. Okay, so now we're going to go over performing the AOPI viability assay on our Solometer K2 software. So I'm just going to shut down this for a second. We'll take a look at our assay. So here, our assay in our drive time menu, we're going to count a bone marrow, freshly, uh, fresh bone marrow sample for AOPI viability. So I'm going to select that assay from our drop-down menu. I already have the image loaded. Okay, so you can see here, if we zoom in, it looks similar to the image I showed with lots of cells. Okay, and I'm just going to count this. So despite the cell number being very high, the software is able to analyze for viability and concentration in about 15 seconds or so. Okay, and we have our results displayed here. We use a dilution of two. Since our AOPI staining is 
one to one, and we'll go over that in just a second. Okay, uh, the counts for total live and dead are displayed here. Our concentration and average diameter is also available, and then our viability percentage you can see highlighted there. So let's close this window. So what we look at here, we're looking at our live cells. So I'm just going to zoom in. Okay, we look at our bright field. Then we can look at our live AO positive cells. And then our PI positive dead cells. We can combine this image. Okay, so we can see them all in the same image. And then we can ask the software to show us what was counted. So again, similar to the images we just showed, you can see the green cells are highlighted in green and our dead, uh, I'm sorry, live cells are highlighted in green and our dead cells are highlighted in red. All right, so our ALPI protocol. So we mix cell samples, similar to our tripan blue, we mix our cell sample at one to one with ALPI. Okay, and it's an instant stain. There's no incubation in the dark. There's no, um, you know, prior dilutions needed to your samples. You mix it one to one with AOPI. You pipette 20 microliters of the stain sample onto our counting chamber. You insert the slide into the instrument, and as we did, we select the assay from our home screen, and then we count. And then it, the software will automatically acquire image, analyze them, and then we can view our results. I got a little ahead of myself there. So we already looked at the ALPI viability assay. So in conclusion, which viability assay is right for me? Should I use Tritan Blue? Should I use AOPI? Should I use both? So the top line there, the AOPI dual fluorescent assay is highly recommended for messy samples with high content of RBC, platelets, or debris. Some of these examples we saw today are primary cells, fresh primary cells, PBMCs, splenocytes, bone marrow, tumor digest, any other clinical samples. Uh, all solometer systems that have dual fluorescent optics channels can perform the AOPI viability measurement. Tripan blue, the, uh, the golden standard of viability counting, is a good method for samples with low contamination, and I put contamination in quotation marks. You'll find in the paper that I referenced earlier uh, some different analysis and different ways to compare the two methods, but samples with low contamination, okay, and high viability. And some examples of these would uh, be cell lines or uh, primary cultured cells or um, samples that you've lysed the red blood cells. And all solometer systems can perform the tripan blue viability measurement. This is a selection guide that you can find on our website. Okay, and I wanted to put it in, in this webinar because I think it's important. You can see here on the left, it gives different examples of cell types. Okay, and we have purified cells um, and TB, you see it on the bottom, tripan blue, the different, uh, the, the legend for the different acronyms we use up here, but uh, purified cells, tripan blue and AOPI will work. Okay, the one thing I want to point out is this lysis step. So we have some that say lysis, some with uh, no lysis, I'm sorry, and with lysing, okay? So isolated mononuclear cells, no RBC lysis. Mini auto T4 and 1000, this assay is not recommended as the RBCs are not lysed. Auto 2000 and Vision, Vision CBA, uh, Solometer K2 can perform this assay using the AOPI viability reagent. And moving down a, a column, uh, or a row, I'm sorry, fresh bone marrow, cord blood, or white blood cells, um, oh, I'm sorry, whole blood, uh, again, mini auto T4 and 1000, they are not recommended as they only use tripan blue for viability. And then the last one, digested tumor or bronchial lavage with debris, uh, again, not recommended. AOPI is the best, best method. And then you have these two fresh bone marrow, cord blood, and whole blood with lysing of the RBCs or frozen bone marrow, cord blood, and whole blood. Um, tripan blue or AOPI will work because the RBCs will tend to be light, especially if they're frozen and thawed, or if you use a, a reagent to light the RBCs. So from cell lines to primary cells, uh, the message of this webinar is the best uh, viability method depends on your sample purity. So if we look at your cat cells, a uh, mortalized cell line, very simple to count. Both AOPI and tripan blue will work great. Moving a little more uh, down the primariness, factor, we can see PBMCs. 
So you can see the, the morphology of a red blood cell here very nicely. And some, if you look around the image, you can see some more uh, the biconcave morphology. And then there's um, some PBMCs in there, but we don't know until we've stained for DNA. And then lastly, whole blood. Uh, and if anybody works with whole blood, I'm happy to help you. Um, the the protocol is a little bit different than mixing one to one, uh, but it's still very simple. But anyway, the the viability method, the best viability method for you depends on your sample purity. And then we have some references here. Uh, and like Sarah mentioned, this webinar uh, will go out to everyone, so you can see these references a little bit closer. These reference AOPI viability uh, with a variety of different salometer instruments, uh, dual fluorescent instruments, that is. And then we have two references here that compare AOPI to TriPan Blue. So uh, are there any questions related to the uh, cell samples or assays that we reviewed today? All right, so thank you, Ben. Uh, it is at this time that we will field any questions. If you have any questions, go ahead and just type them into your questions box. So I do see one question here, uh, and it says, if we're using cultured cell line, is it better to use TriPan Blue or AOPI? Is there any difference between the two if I'm using a very clean sample? Great question. Um, we, have, we have extensively tested this. And for cell lines, um, for high viability cell lines, if you're doing like a killing assay, it's recommended to use AOPI because TriPan Blue, and, and this isn't coming from Nexlam or, or me specifically, but there are publications that do reference TriPan Blue at low viabilities is not recommended. Um, but if you're counting cell lines uh, with high viability, the TriPan Blue assay or the AOPI assay will work just fine. You, you will get um, interchangeable results. You will get similar viabilities and similar concentrations. Great. Do we have any other questions? It doesn't look like we do have any more. Uh, if anything comes to mind after the webinar has ended, you can always feel free to email support at nextalum.com. I'm one of our tech support analysts. We'll be able oh, we do have one. Came in. It says, which is the best method for cells that are thawed after they were irradiated and frozen? Irradiated and frozen. Um, so, yeah, so after thawing, uh, generally the, the red blood cells are light. So, um, so tripan blue and AOPI will work. Uh, if you ask me which method I prefer, regardless of the purity of the sample or the, uh, the contamination of the sample, I, I would always recommend the AOPI method. Uh, the reason for that is TriPan Blue, is, as again, many of you uh, know, um, many of you know the, the TriPan Blue method, uh, it's based on the contrast of the cells. So you have cells that are stained dark with TriPan Blue, those are dead. And then you can have some cells that are lower contrast um, that are lighter in their bluish tint. Okay, those are also dead cells. Tripan blue also causes, causes cells to burst. Um, so if you ask me, the, the best method for viability and the most consistent and reliable method is the AOPI assay uh, because like we discussed earlier and like we've seen so many times, the, um, the, uh, the live cells fluoresce green and the dead cells will fluoresce red. And there's no subjectivity. There's no, um, you know, is this a dead cell? Maybe is this not a dead cell? Is this just tripan blue crystals? Um, it either fluoresces green or red, and that's the end of the story. Great. We have another question that came in, and it's asking, does cell size have anything to do with tripan blue versus AOPI? Um, yeah, good question. Uh, cell size, the, so if you're working with a cell line, Okay, the cell size measurement is best done in bright field. So if you have a cell line and you want to analyze the sizes of cells, you may be looking at two different populations. The best way to do this is in bright field. If you do not have a clean cell sample and you want to look at cell size, then you can use the fluorescent method. Um, the fluorescent method, it's important to set up your exposure times properly uh, as if, because if the cells are overexposed, uh, or too bright, 
um, the cell size will shift a little to be larger. Okay, so and that's something that if you call in next month, we can help you optimize that. Also, our parameters and our assay setups in the software that you have uh, is optimized for for most cell lines. But again, um, if you're working with clean samples, the best way to do that is via Brightfield. Great. Okay. Well, if there are no other questions, we can go ahead and conclude this webinar for this month. As always, we want to thank everybody for joining. Uh, as I did mention, this has been recorded. Uh, so shortly after the webinar finishes up this afternoon, the um, recording will be available. We'll post it on our Facebook page, our Twitter, our LinkedIn. Uh, we'll also send it out to everybody. So that way, if you want to pass it along to a colleague who you think might be interested, um, or just watch it again for yourself to see the references or the uh, document numbers that Ben had provided. Uh, you can do that. Uh, next month, we are going to be focusing on bright field units. Uh, no, excuse me, small cells and the X1X2. Um, again, we want to thank you all for joining. If you do have any questions, feel free to email them to support at nextalum.com. And have a great weekend, everybody.